Welcome to this video about the system broadcast receiver in Jetpack Compose. In this video, I will show you how you can quickly create a system broadcast receiver as a composable function, which can then be invoked within other composable functions. And then you can listen to any kind of broadcast events. So here in Android Studio, in an empty Jetpack Compose project, we can first take care of our system broadcast receiver and go to our root package and create a new Kotlin file which we will call system broadcast receiver. This will be a composable and system broadcast receiver. And this composable takes a system action of type spring, which will define our system action, maybe a Wi-Fi change or a Bluetooth change or some kind of other custom change. And then we will also have a on system event which takes an intent which is optional and returns nothing. And in here we first need the context, which we can get from local context.current. And we also need a current on system event by remember updated state. This side effect here makes sure that we always get the latest version of our on system event function here. And now we can define a disposable effect. So disposable effect, this effect takes two keys. On the one hand, our context and our on system, no, our system action. In here, we first need an intent filter. So well intent filter is equal to intent filter and we can pass our system action. And then we can create an anonymous object, which we will call broadcast is equal to object which inherits from broadcast receiver and in this block here we can then override the on receive function and pass the intent to our current on system event let me quickly rename this from p1 to intent and then we can pass it down here and down here we can then register our receiver context dot register receiver and we will register our broadcasts and with the corresponding intent filter. And then we still get an error here because we also need to override the onDispose function. So onDispose, in here we can then unregister the receiver. So the broadcast receiver will get unregistered when the composition leaves. And yeah, this is actually it for our system broadcast receiver. Now let's create a little example screen and make use of it. So in our root package, we can create a new Kotlin file called main screen, which will be a composable. And in here we can then say system broadcast receiver and we need to pass a system action, which will be on the first example, a Bluetooth change, but you can uh, take any kind of um, uh, intent or broadcast intent. So I will use Bluetooth adapter action state change. And we can write this on system event at the end here as a Lambda block. And in this Lambda block, we get the corresponding intent. So receive intent. And then we can get the action of this intent, receiver states dot action. And if this is null, we can simply return. But if this is not the case, then we can uh, double check the action. Maybe you can leave this away, but I think this um, uh, should be double checked here. So Bluetooth adapter dot action state change. In here, we can then define some logic to check if Bluetooth is maybe disabled now or if it's still enabled. And then we can show the user a dialog if he disabled it. And yeah, let's quickly do this to show you that it's actually working. So. Um, on to to state change we will pass this function in our main screen composable up here this is a function which takes nothing and returns nothing and in our main activity we can then invoke our main screen composable and pass this on bluetooth stage change function so let's remove this default stuff here and also remove the preview and here we can then say main screen on bluetooth stage change and then we can pass the corresponding Bluetooth logic, which then checks if Bluetooth is still enabled, if it's disabled. I will call this function show tooth dialog. And down here we can then define this function. First of all, we need a private late init var Bluetooth adapter. Then we also need a private var is Bluetooth dialog already shown, which is false by default. I will come to these variables when we use them. 
and then we can defy our private fun show Bluetooth dialog. And first of all, we check if Bluetooth is currently enabled or if it's not enabled. So if Bluetooth adapter is not enabled, so we negate this is enabled. And then we can check if the Bluetooth dialog is currently not shown because um, maybe this show Bluetooth dialog function gets triggered twice because uh, when the Bluetooth change actually the Bluetooth stage actually changes, then there are multiple kind of state changes if the user turns it off. So there's not only off and on, it's also currently initializing and all that stuff. And so this show Bluetooth dialog function can maybe get triggered twice. In here, we will have a well enable Bluetooth intent, which is equal to an intent. And we pass our Bluetooth adapter dot action request enable. And then we need to start the intent here. But before we can do this, we need to define it. We can do this down here. This will be a private well start Bluetooth intent for result is equal to register for activity result. And then we can pass activity result contracts, no contracts, start activity for result. And then we actually get the result here in this Lambda block. And in here we can then say is Bluetooth dialog already shown because this means that the Bluetooth dialog is not shown anymore because the user pressed on the dialog to enable or disable Bluetooth. So we can set this to false. And then if result.result code is not equal to activity.result OK, then we will show this Bluetooth dialog again because uh, let's assume that we really need Bluetooth in our app. And if the user denies it, we will show the dialog again and again and again. Well, this is just an example here. And um, yeah, you can implement your own logic here. And so up here, in our show Bluetooth dialog function, we can then say start Bluetooth intent for result dot launch and pass our enabled Bluetooth intent. And then we can say is Bluetooth dialog already shown is equal to true because then it's currently shown. And the last thing we need to do is to override on start here and um, define our Bluetooth adapter. So we can get this from get system service context dot um, Bluetooth service as Bluetooth manager, and then we can say dot adapter. And we can also uh, show the Bluetooth dialog from the beginning so that Bluetooth is currently enabled. And then we need to go to our manifest and define the user's permission and say Bluetooth here. And then we are good to go to try this out. I will try this out on my real phone here, which I will mirror to you that you can also see what's currently going on. But because uh, the emulator in Android Studio does not support yet, I think. As you can see, the app started and Bluetooth is currently turned on. So let's try out our broadcast receiver and turn Bluetooth off. So when I turn it off, then you can see the app is asking to turn on Bluetooth because it received this Bluetooth state change intent and invoked then our function which uh, opens this dialog. So we can click allow, then it works and try it again. And as you can see, it always receives this Bluetooth state change. And to show you that this does not only work with the Bluetooth state change, I will also show you how this works with the Wi-Fi connection change. So let's go to our main screen and then we can just copy this and paste it down here. And here we say Wi-Fi manager dot Wi-Fi state change action. And we can also copy this and put it down here. And we don't want to show the Bluetooth dialog here. Uh, we don't, we just uh, say print line and then we can say Wi-Fi state changed. And then we can try this out again. Normally I would do this on an emulator, but uh, well, we already uh, check this on the real phone here on the mirrored device. So let's uh, take this as well for the Wi-Fi state change example. So let's go up here. And I also locked the uh, opened the lock console here. And when I turn off Wi-Fi, then you can see here the Wi-Fi state change um, uh, got printed twice because uh, as I already said, it's not only one state uh, for on and off, it's also some kind of state for currently turning on, currently turning off or something like this. So 
Um, yeah, keep this in mind if you uh, implement your own logic. And the last thing I want to show you is to also create an own custom broadcast intent. And you can also, of course, listen to this. We can copy and paste this one more time here. And this time we will uh, call it custom broadcast. And we can also copy it here and paste it down here in our if conditioner. And normally I would make this a constant, but I think it, this is okay now. And then we also need the context. Well, context is equal to local context dot current. And then we will build a super simple UI here. So this will be a box which takes a modifier and this modifier will build the max size. And the content alignment of this box will be alignment.center. And I'm not sure, I think, oh yeah, this is the wrong modifier. And in here we can then define a button with our on click method. And this button will contain a text, send broadcast. And in the on click we say, well, intent is equal to intent with our custom in intent. Normally I would also make this a constant intent.action is equal to our custom broadcast. And then we say context.send broadcast and pass our intent. And um, in here we can then uh, print uh, custom broadcast received. And then we can try this out. And as you can see in the log console, when I click on this send broadcast button, then we receive our custom broadcast intent. All right, okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and you can now easily apply the broadcast receiver in your own projects. Thanks for watching and we will see us in the next video.